Every now and again, someone in the sim racing community makes me an offer I can't refuse. And when Martin from Race Anywhere asked if I could take a look at a new set of sim racing pedals that they were interested in stocking, manufactured by OPP Motorsport, based on one of their real world pedal boxes, well, you can imagine that I had a hard time keeping my cool. So today's video is the result of my findings having used this impressive piece of kit exclusively for the last month or so. Hello fellow sim racers. Let's just kick things off by explaining a little bit about OBP Motorsport and the pedal set. Now they've been supplying real world race teams with pedal boxes since 2007, manufactured here in Britain. They're now providing one of their most popular pedal boxes to sim racers, and therefore most of the mechanical parts of the OBP Esports Pro Race V2 pedals are identical to those on the Pro Race V2 system used in all sorts of motorsport applications. These parts are constructed from 6061 aluminium, which is one of those varieties that you commonly hear referred to as aircraft grade. The big selling point of these pedals though is the hydraulic brake pedal, which means there's a slave and a master cylinder and all of the associated plumbing built into the back of the unit. And that's all converted into an electrical signal via a 10,000 PSI pressure sensor. On top of that, you can adjust the firmness of the brake pedal with the now fairly familiar system of differing grades of fibroelastomer springs. So far, so fancy. Beyond all of that, it has the common adjustability that you would expect, including brake pedal firmness, accelerator return, clutch stop, movable pedal faces, etc. And here's the interesting bit. It doesn't just work with a PC. In fact, OBP can supply connectivity for Thrustmaster and Fanatec systems, allowing this to work with consoles that support those wheelbases. Now, if you're wondering why I think that's interesting, well, it's because it's really not common for super high-end sim gear to work with consoles, so points to OBP. I should point out though that all of my testing was done on my PC-based sim rig, as the PS4 rig that I'm building is still without a seat. The build quality and material choices are, as you would expect, top draw. There's not a hint of movement or slack anywhere in the system, but again, that's very much to be expected at this end of the pool. The pedals pivot on oil impregnated bronze bearings, which should outlast us all, and importantly, stand up to the stresses exerted on them by the pedals, particularly the middle one. As for the cradle that holds everything together, it's powder coated mild steel and is very much function over form, and I mean that in a positive way. So in terms of engineering, it's pretty much spot on, as you would expect from a motorsport derived product. However, there is one minor thing that doesn't quite live up to the rest of the product. The electronics are housed away from the pedal in a small plastic enclosure, which would be a massive positive were it not for the fact that the enclosure itself is kind of thin, cheap plastic. On top of that, the cable has a total length of around one meter, which really wasn't enough to be able to run to my PC directly above without the use of a USB extension. Now, these two points really aren't game changers and I doubt anyone's gonna be particularly bothered by either, but when the rest of the pedal set is put together with such a commitment to engineering quality and function, the difference does feel fairly stark. I normally wouldn't address how to mount equipment to your sim rig or even bother with the setup stuff because in most cases it just sort of feels like unnecessary bloat. But with these pedals, there are a few things you need to bear in mind that are perhaps not entirely self-evident as they are with more mass market sim racing products. First of all, the brake pedal, being hydraulic, needs to be filled with brake fluid and then the system needs to be bled of any trapped air, just as you would in a real car. Now you can do this on your own, but it is best to rope in a friend since you do need about three hands and brake fluid should be treated with a healthy dose of respect. In this case, Martin from Race Anywhere just made his video debut in arm form. And on that note, I think it's really nice to see Race Anywhere are actually stocking brake fluid as an add on in their store. Now, obviously for a lot of people that won't be necessary, but I think there are plenty of sim racers out there that just aren't car guys and don't really know what they're looking for. So it's a nice touch. Anyway, moving on, mounting this to your rig is pretty straightforward if you want to mount them base plate down. But if you want to run the pedals inverted, you're going to have to find your own solution. Easily done with an extrusion base rig, but less so with other types. But that's also the case with almost every other pedal set on the market. 
While we're still talking rigs, you're going to need a decent one to make the most of these pedals. You can adjust the firmness of the brake pedal from what I would describe as a performance road car level all the way up to kicking a brick levels of firmness, and that's going to expose any flexibility in your chassis or your seat setup. In fact, I discovered that my Sparco R100 folding seat actually pivots a fair amount under load, and it's quite noisy when doing so, which is why there isn't audio on some of these clips. Something else to bear in mind is that you really do need a foot plate. I didn't have one to hand, so I mounted mine off of the back of the Pro Simrig pedal deck. This worked perfectly, but I probably wouldn't recommend it as a long-term solution. Now, on to driving, and let's start off with the clutch pedal because it's probably going to be the least exciting. There's no spring to be found here as it's operated by a gas strut, and that feels excellent, though it is slightly noisier than a spring-based pedal, though not by much, and I'm not sure if that actually really matters to anyone, but it's worth noting. Obviously, there's no bite point feel here, but well, that's par for the course in sim racing. And lastly, you can adjust the throw of the pedal if you want to shorten its travel, which is a nice feature to have. Moving on to the loud pedal, and in this case, it's the return that's adjustable, which is very helpful for heel toe in particular, though, of course, I forgot about that when I was filming these shots. The pedal's controlled by a traditional spring setup, and I would describe the firmness as medium. In fact, it's pretty much identical to my Fanatec Clubsport V3s, but not as firm as my Huisingveld Sprints. For me, this feels about right, with the slightly softer spring being better for fast throttle blips, but this is very much a subjective thing and your mileage may vary. Now, onto the main event, the brake pedal. And I guess you know what I'm going to say, it feels like a real car. If you've ever driven a car with a high performance brake system, then you know what you're getting yourself into. But for everyone else, I'll try my best to describe it here. Pushing into the pedal doesn't feel all that different from some of the other high-end load cell brake systems I've used. You squeeze into the pedal and the firmness increases quickly and predictably, allowing you to confidently use your muscle memory to find the braking threshold with a high degree of precision. But it's the feeling coming off of the pedal that reveals a more noticeable difference. The pushback that you get just feels that little bit more natural and, and dare I say linear. This manifests itself most notably when trail braking, which really does feel great on this setup. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't an earth-shattering difference, and some of the high-end load cell equipped sets of pedals that I've used do almost capture that feel, which is a testament to how well put together some of those simulations of real braking systems actually are. But if you want the real deal, there is absolutely no denying that this gets it right. Every time I feature a really Gucci piece of sim racing gear on the channel, most of you guys want to know how it stacks up against the competition and what, if any, performance advantage do you get for the Gucci price tag. So let's address that now. These are Logitech pedals that they bundle with their range of sim racing wheels. They're a great entry level set, but they lack the feel and construction quality of more high end products. That being said, they do the job admirably and lots of people go plenty fast using them. Next up, this set of Fanatec Clubsport V3s cost as much or more than the Logitech bundled wheel and pedal sets together, but for the extra money you get a load cell brake pedal which helps with consistency and feel, as well as all metal construction. These are a great upgrade from one of the entry level pedal sets. Moving on, this set of Huisingveld Sprints cost nearly twice as much as the Fanatec set, and they are a serious piece of kit. They're more adjustable, have better feel, and they're more solid than the Fanatec offering. They are, very simply put, excellent. But in terms of driving, in my experience, the improvement in feel that you get over something like these club sport pedals is quite small. Now, finally, onto the subject of today's video, the amply named OBP Esports Pro Race V2 pedals. These are almost twice as expensive as the hoisting belts, but for your money you get real world motorsport parts and the level of quality that you would associate with that. You get a hydraulic brake pedal, which feels exactly like a real race car because, well, that's what it's from. There is no doubt in my mind that the driving experience offered by these pedals is the best of the pack, but as I've said on this channel many times before, in terms of one lap pace, any of these pedals will produce similar lap times. 
What better pedals do offer, and we're mostly talking about the brake pedal here, is better consistency and better immersion, and of course better construction. So the point that I'm trying to drive at here is that, like most pastimes or professions that involve equipment, when it comes to performance, there's a law of diminishing returns that sets in. And in sim racing, it can appear like that sets in fairly hard. So then, are these the perfect sim racing pedals? Well, not quite, but they're certainly the closest I've ever used. The construction quality and build are excellent, and the driving experience is, in my opinion at least, outstanding. But here are a couple of small things that I think would improve this setup. For starters, it would be nice if OBP included an optional throttle spring with a heavier rate, since I know there are sim racers out there that like a heftier throttle pedal, despite that not necessarily being in their best interests. The software side of things makes use of DI View, which may be familiar to many, particularly Huisingveld owners. Now, DI View is perfectly functional, but it's really not the most user-friendly piece of software in the world. And finally, there's that cable with the breakout box enclosure, which is again perfectly functional, but not quite up to the standards of the rest of the product. Now, I don't think any of those things even remotely affect the performance of the product, and I'm sure none of them are going to be deal breakers either. But when a product is positioned right at the top of the marketplace, then I think it's all the more important to make note of those small details. So if it sounds like I'm nitpicking, it's, it's because I am. But let's not lose sight of the big picture here. These pedals are fantastic. But are they the best on the market? Well, again, the answer is a kind of fence sitting maybe. They certainly offer the best brake pedal feel I've encountered and the construction is top notch. But as I referenced earlier, the law of diminishing returns really does set in hard at the top end of the market. So any advantages this pedal set does have over others in the same space are small. Now, that's not to damn the OBP pedals with faint praise. They are thoroughly excellent. But I think it's important to acknowledge that, like in real world motorsport, the margins for victory at the top are very small. And as we start to meander towards the end of this video, it's time to talk turkey. Raceanywhere.co.uk supplies these pedals at £1,196 at the time of recording. And there's no getting around the fact that this is an expensive set of pedals, particularly compared to some of the more mass market offerings. But if you want top tier construction and real car feel, then comparing this set of pedals to say a T3PA is like comparing apples to ocelots. And that's where these value judgments become really messy. What represents good value for me is almost certainly different to you. So on that note, I'm just going to leave it with this one final thought. If you're a sim racer that prioritizes immersion and simulating the driving experience and feel of a real world car, the OBP Pro Race V2 pedals tick a lot of boxes. So then that just about wraps things up here. Thanks again to Martin from Race Anywhere who kindly loaned me the pedals and who is going to have to engage in an elaborate scavenger hunt to find them when he wants to take them back. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe so you can see more content like this in the future. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you so much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.